We're Carlo and Nikki, and we live in Positano, Italy. Our house is far from the road, but it overlooks the sea and we grow our own food. We show you what it's really like living year round on the Amalfi Coast. So please subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. Mamma, che freddo, Peppe! Oh, Fa freddo! Com'è? Buona! Ma c'è anche la crema dentro, fammi vedere! Mm. Uh. So I'm from Vienna and we have a big uh, culture about coffee too because we came from the Turkish cup of coffee but I love in Italy that I can choose in the morning cappuccino, caffè latte, latte macchiato, ristretto there's so many different things, so many different types and it's every time delicious at one of the two ports in Naples normally also for Carlo and for Pepe it means the first time here normally we leave from Beverello where we have more the little ferry boats going around to Procida, Ischia, Capri, Sorrento now as we are not in high season and we are yeah, in winter winter mood here also at the port the big ferry boats as you can see leave only from here to Procida and you have only two in the morning and then two in the afternoon so uh, we have to organize ourselves well to be back otherwise we have to swim Cosa stiamo andando a fare a Procida? Uh, we are going to check a little project for work to see if it's, it's fine or not So if we get lost, everybody knows you're Carlo. <laughs> you have to try our local street food which here we have gnocchi alla sorrentina we have pasta we have the meatballs we have potatoes we have a special thing of how do you translate cattoli patate uh, i don't know it's like a, a something with pota smashed potatoes yeah and then the frittata and uh, if you don't know what to take just take everything i'm hungry now <laughs> <laughs> I did the same just for you. 
Peppe andiamo a provare questa barca? Ci proviamo. Ci proviamo di provare. Come ci proviamo? Stiamo ah. trovando un giro a Cristian. No? Sì. Oh, oggi è perfetto. Cosa fate lì? Ciao amore, stavo guardando tutte queste foto qua e in questa foto qui quasi mi sembravi tu di spalle. Ti giuro, i capelli sembrano davvero i tuoi. So che magari dirai, ma quando mai? Però mi sembri di tu. I want to show you these people. Can do in the middle of the square eating. Peppe, allora avete fatto questo affare o no? No, no? troppi soldi e non l'abbiamo fatto più. Ma come? Siamo venuti, siamo venuti fino a qua apposta. Ma abbiamo mangiato molto bene a prossimo. Sì. Torniamo con questo qua. Guardate quanto è carino. È un aliscafo. Aliscafo, scusa. So, we need to come back for sure here in Procida. This is a no, not a mirror, uh, Pepe. <laughs> But, uh, sorry, before you finish, when you pay me, what okay. Later, later. Okay. later. Not, not in, the, okay, in a video. Just, not in a video. For oh, sure. Me. I promise you. I pay you. Thank you. Okay. No, non stiamo affondando, e questo non è scafo. E l'onda arriva, adesso non arriva più, guardate. Yellow Sapphire. Sì, è grigio. Eh. We are in Naples, very close to the pier. And I say this is very like to the church in Positano. Hello. Hello. Hello, Ali. Like a candle, I just burn away. Come here. Come here. Oh, we love really you. Love you. No, mamma, non sta là. Andiamo. Come on. I'm not in Positano at the moment. I've flown over to England. I'm with dad for a week and one of my brothers is coming over from California. I haven't actually seen him for five years so I decided to come over as well and spend some time here. While I'm here, I've got a few other things to do. Now, let me explain. Dad used to live in Cyprus and when he came back to England, he packed up everything from the Cyprus house and it was all brought back in a shipping container to the family home and now he's living here alone. <laughs> he has two houses worth of stuff all around. So um, I'm going to go through it with him. We're going to go through some of the saucepan drawers and the cutlery drawers and some of the kitchen stuff and see what he doesn't need and what I can take to Tuscany, which will save me buying it because I'd rather, as I said before, I'd rather use second hand than buy brand new when it's not necessary. So that's what we're going to do today. Yours. I made that 
Well, you made it for me. <laughs> I have one. You might have filled it up. Bloody hell. I mean, you can take it both if you want. No, 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 I wouldn't. I think I would need one. I need two. Hi, dish, do you want that? Or is that big, big roasting tin there? We'll go through this one. That I use for my jam making. And with it, I need to. I've got all these in here. <laughs> I mean, I, I, use, I use that one. Occasionally use that one. So I've got all these. All these in the Those are all virtually unused. There's also this plate set, which I remember from when I was younger. They're lovely plates. And they come with some serving bowls. Oh, my God. Oh, I haven't it. Oh, yeah, I've Seven, eight. So there's one of them missing, one of them missing. Mm -hmm. They might be in the other drawer. They might be. Yeah. Well, you like the polished Positano is now in full on winter mode. A hibernation of sorts. Most of the shops are closed, the restaurants too. I think one or two are currently open, but I'm not even sure which ones this year. For the residents of the town, it's time to rest after a long, busy season. In the summer, workers have long hours and little time off, maybe a day a week if they're lucky. So winter is time to repose, to be with family and maybe take a vacation. Many men in town get re-employed over the winter as painters and builders around town, but there's not much else on offer for people who need to work. Many people claim unemployment benefits over the winter until they can get a job again in April. There's not much to do here in the winter. We don't have a gym, a cinema, a theatre or a pub anymore. Sorrento is the nearest town to go to if you want something other than beach walks and mountain hikes. When I first moved here, Positano had more to offer the residents. But slowly over the years, things have changed and places have closed down. As the summer season has become busier, the winter season has become emptier and quieter. We've learned to adapt. There are a couple of yoga or Pilates classes on offer, or gyms in nearby towns. I try to work out at home a few times a week, although I'm not particularly consistent. We take long walks each day, sometimes up into the mountain paths, sometimes down to the beach where we might find someone to talk to and pass some time with. In the evenings we stay cosy at home, 
I'll light some candles, cook something yummy, Carlo might choose a film and I might go and read in the other room. January and February are the worst months, cold, dark and deathly quiet as many people in town go away to warmer climates for their annual holidays. This year we'll be departing too, not to somewhere warmer, but embarking on our new Tuscan house project. We're very excited and this is probably the first time I'm looking forward to January in years. Hi, it's been a week since I've been here and I've hardly filmed anything. I think to be honest with you, I've sort of needed a break from filming. I have been editing a lot because I'm putting together a video for the new year, but I just needed a break from filming and coming up with ideas and doing stuff. So I've just had a lovely week with my dad. I haven't really seen many friends this time. Well, I haven't seen any friends this time at all. I've had my hair done. I've packed a load of stuff to go to England. I have also had a lip blush procedure done, which was painful. <laughs> I'm so close this. Everybody has something about themselves that they're insecure about. And my thing is my lips. Without lipstick on, they are very, very pale. They sort of fade away into my house. They make me look very washed out and I won't go anywhere without lipstick on. And I hate being seen without my lipstick. And today I'm gonna to do something about it. I'm going to get lip blush, which is like a semi-permanent makeup, which will inject some color into my lips. And I had this done about 12 years ago, actually, in Naples, and it was a bit of a failure. So I'm hoping that it's gonna be better today. I'm not sure if I'm gonna document it, so I'm recording this just in case. I didn't film anything afterwards, the day or two afterwards, because when I came out of there, my lips were so swollen. It looked so ridiculous. I looked like some spitting image puppet. It was just like big flubbery rubber lips. I didn't feel like filming anything at all. Today is the first day I felt completely normal again. And I've got a little bit of scabbing still around the edges and then the colour will fade away for the next week or so and then it will be fully developed within a month so we'll have to just wait and see how it is but already I'm really really happy with the results so I'm really glad I got that done. It's a lovely girl called Beata uh, based in Bagshot in Surrey and I loved the pictures on her Instagram and she was an absolute angel. She was a perfectionist, she was so careful of detail, she took all the time she needed and I'd highly, highly recommend her. The main thing I've been doing is packing up things to take to Tuscany and going around the house and deciding what I need to take. So other than the kitchen stuff that you've already seen, I am taking two chairs that I have always wanted to get over to Italy and never been able to fit in the car. So I'm really excited to bring these. Now, one of them is, this, this old blanket is covering them, they'll probably be packed in this and this will probably come too, which is fun. I've never seen this blanket before in my life, but it's quite a nice one. One of these chairs was a school art project when I was 16 years old. And I'm actually quite proud of it. It's a pop art chair. So we had to get an old wooden chair and decorate it and I decided to decorate mine pop, aisle, pop, pop art style. So here we go, this is the chair that I painted in school that is now coming with me to Italy. Quite handy having the mirror there because you can see the back of it as well. And then there's the gypsy caravan style one which is a little bit more damaged, it looks like it's been left out in the rain at some point but I'm sure I will find somewhere to put it. 
This afternoon, one of my brothers is arriving. I haven't seen him for five years. So I'm gonna spend the last couple of days here with him and his partner and dad. And then on Sunday, I'm flying back. I'm getting a quote from a company at the moment who do small removals. So I will let you know more about that when I have some answers because I don't have any at the moment. Holly, what are you doing? You got stuck. There we go. We spent three days in Lisbon since there are no direct flights from Naples to Madeira. Also, Nicola had never been there before, so I had the chance to show him around my favorite places from the last time I've been. Now we're gonna head to the airport and go to Madeira. We've arrived. And the place is very nice. There's a very pretty kitchen. I really love the tiles. Dining room. We have a really nice TV with a sofa. Nice balcony out here. We'll show you in the daytime. And it connects right to the bedroom. Good morning. So this is going to be our first full day in Madeira. We're going to go to the uh, main town here. So the capital Punchal. I'm just going to go for a walk around. Oh, nel letto è giocato Ronaldo, arriva tutta la sua vita. Now we're going for a walk in the botanical gardens. Um they see <laughs> he keeps falling and tripping. Sto guardando la mappa, non guardo. Since we only bought tickets for the cable car one way, we decided we would take a fun alternative. This is a popular tourist activity to do in Funchal. The tobogan is a handmade basket that you can sit in and two guys will push you down a steep road. This actually used to be a way of transportation back in the day to get quickly downhill. This route was two kilometers long. morning so today we're gonna go on our first hike we're gonna do the hike of the 25 fontes well that's translated half in english oh. i can't pronounce it very well we just parked the car and we're gonna start the trail apparently this one's supposed to be a bit more family friendly compared to some of the other trails they have here so maybe it's like less dangerous it's quite long anyway so We'll see how it goes. Stupendo. And we got two perfect denata. They look quite nice, so. Asking for food? I've never seen a little bird come so close. Stupendo. This hike actually ended up being one of the easiest ones we did because there was a nice temperature and it wasn't too long. It was one of the most crowded ones, but there's pretty waterfalls and an overall nice trail. When we were done, we decided to go to Cabo Girao which is a viewpoint with glass panels on the floor, also the perfect spot for sunset. Then we decided to pay a visit to Cascada dos Anjos, meaning waterfall of the angels. It's a popular spot where a stream happens to fall on the road. We're hiking the Levada Ponta Sao Lorenzo and we just started. I feel like Carlo when I talk mm. to the guy.
The next day, we decided to drive along the coast and visit different towns on the way. From my experience in Portugal, you can find many viewpoints on the map. In Portuguese, they call them miraduros, and I loved how well organized they are, making it easy for us to know where to stop. So we're heading to the chapel now, and the view is incredible. There's a few stairs, but I guess it's all training for the last hike we'll do while we're here. We're saving the most difficult one for last. I can't zoom with the GoPro, but there, there's the old road that passes by there. And obviously there it fell down, so there's no road anymore, but you can see it there as well. This is where they blocked off the road. Let's have a look. I guess it has been closed for a very long time. Look at all these plants. This is Seikchal, which is the next town we're gonna visit. There's a black sand beach, which has a really nice view of the mountains. This is Fanal Forest, known for having these mystical looking trees. I've heard it's always mysteriously misty here, but when we went it was really clear and sunny. Nonetheless, there was still a mystical feeling here. Good morning. Today is day day five in Madeira. We we're supposed to do a hike uh, that's pretty famous, Calderaio Verde. Um, unfortunately, it's closed. There was like a landslide or something. So now we're gonna see if we can do something else. Questo passa alla sud. Funny story here, we were actually pretty lucky because after sticking around for a while, we saw a ranger walk by and take away all the plastic banners that indicated the trail was closed. So as he walked past us and nodded, we excitedly started the hike. The trail just sent us here, so we're going to be going in a cave. Ooh, Cervera <laughs> Torcha. Ooh. There's an opening. Wow. From here onwards the trail is closed, so we're going to sit down here and have lunch and then work our way back. So we are here at sunrise and we were like uh, guessing how many cars there were before us. I said four. <laughs> this is all empty, eh, empty, full, packed. They continue all the way down. So another day, another hike, but trust me, this one's worth to watch. By far, these are some of the best views I've ever seen. This is a hike from Pico Doreiro, the third tallest mountain in the island, 
to Pico Ruivo, the tallest point at about 1,800 meters. It's actually the third tallest mountain in Portugal. The trail is only six kilometers one way, but there are lots of ups and downs with steep stairs and even a few caves. First cave. As we walked, we would either remain breathless at the view or because of the incline. Can you do that? Can Grand Canyon? Let me grab my torch. Come sono contente che ti hanno rivisto. As I flew back from England last Sunday, the video went out on YouTube that had the link to the soap sets that we were selling. And the next morning, Marta phoned me and said, Vicky, are you back? You need to come into the laboratory. We've got loads of orders. We need help packing them. So I went off down to the laboratory and Sky came with me and there was a few people there and we spent the whole day packing and shipping orders and more and more poured in. By three o'clock that afternoon, we had sold out. We sold over 560 sets of soap, which is just absolutely mind blowing. We had no idea that we would sell that many. We did not plan that, we didn't even make that many, but there was extra soaps that we'd made, so we managed, but we are absolutely mind blown by it. And we're so grateful to everybody who ordered, so thankful, and also very sorry for anybody who didn't manage to order in time, because I know some people save the video and don't watch it on the day it goes out. So I'm really, really sorry about that. We just had no idea that so many people would buy these gift sets. And what I also forgot to mention, which was very important, is that a euro of every set, soap set sold, <laughs> we decided that we would donate to charity and we're going to give them to Alma, which is the foundation just nearby, about 20 minutes from here, that look after the kids with disabilities and get them working in the land and growing vegetables and waitering when they do the pizza socials and looking after the animals on their land. You would have seen me going there with Elizabeth a few times. They always have a Christmas fair and an autumn fair. We've recently went to the Halloween-y autumn fair, which was full of pumpkins. And it's just a lovely, lovely place. And the kids are just so wonderful there. So we really wanted to help them. Um, so yes, a massive thank you to everybody who ordered and again apologies to anybody who didn't manage in time. We will get together and make more soaps and keep doing these kits but what you have to take in mind is that we need to keep soaps to cure for four weeks before we can send them out. So it's not going to be an instantaneous thing, it's something that we will try and do maybe after Christmas I think we'll try it and get a few more batches 
prepared so that we can still sell some more of these gift sets. As always, a massive thank you to everybody for watching our videos, for commenting on our videos, for liking our videos, for subscribing to our channel, and for buying the soaps. Thank you to all of you. Have a wonderful week, everybody, and we will see you again next Sunday.